Raised up St. John the Baptist, make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord. Give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual goodness, and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. 
God for heaven and earth. Amen. A reading of the Messiah. I will listen to you, pay attention, and notice the people. The Lord called me before I was born. In my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his bosom. <coughs> He said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I had told in vain, I had exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while, my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honoured in the eyes of the Lord, my God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant. To bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the tribes of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation will reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks to you, Filled with a joy so glorious that I cannot be described. 
because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward. That is the salvation of your souls. It was this salvation that the prophets were looking and searching so hard for. Their prophecies were about the grace which was to come to you, the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would come after them. And they tried to find out for what time and in what circumstances all this was to be expected. It was revealed to them that the news they brought of all the things which have now been announced to you by those who preached to you the good news through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven was for you and not for themselves. Even the angels longed to catch a glimpse of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be God. Discerning just what the situation is closer to home 
is more complex than the reality of how faith is under attack so visibly in countries we work with. The Middle East, Asia, Africa. But this sentiment is at the heart of the spirituality of the ACM family. How do we respond when under attack on account of our faith? Reflecting on the various things contributing to bringing us together in church and online on this evening are inaugural benefactors. I was brought first and foremost to the Soul Feast we're celebrating the birth of the last of the great prophets, St. John the Baptist. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, preached a short homily at the morning mass at the Casa Santa Marta on this day in 2020, so right at the heart of the pandemic. He spoke of humiliation as a vital component of faith. But in order to appreciate humiliation, he reminded us, we need to examine our consciences regularly and recognize our own pride, our own vanity. This, of course, many of you will know, is key to the spiritual exercise of St. Ignatius, and it's surely behind what the Pope was speaking about that morning. Going through the first week of experience, recognizing how we love sinners, before we truly know the power of humiliation, compassion, and cross in our lives. And Francis said, this is key to the lives of both John the Baptist and Jesus. After his fast, said Pope Francis, Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert. John similarly was tested before the doctors of the law who asked him if he was the Messiah. While both had authority over the people and their preaching could be said to be authoritative, they also each had moments of loneliness, as Pope Francis put it, a sort of human and spiritual depression. Perhaps in our language, I was thinking of reading this, we might call it being under spiritual attack. The attack on faith, which brings us immediate despair, desolation, wanting to give up. Most of us have been there in one way or another, perhaps. But Pope Francis is especially helpful here. The Pope explains that John the Baptist the greatest prophet, the greatest man of all the world, as Jesus regarded him, as well as the Son of God. Both chose totally free, that is, chose the path of humiliation. This is the path that we Christians must follow. We cannot be humble without humiliation. We cannot give in to the way of the world, which is not the way of Jesus. We must not be afraid of humiliation. Not easy for this one. But faith is far from easy in today's world. We know that it takes the end so well. And we also know that at this time in our own society. I encounter a good deal more anger, frustration, and aggression than before the pandemic. I wonder how many people resonate with that. It's surely also to do with the uncertain situation in Europe with this terrible war in Ukraine. At this time, I'm hearing of so many around us in society in general, too, who struggle financially as the gap between poor. But we're called to be leaders, to serve the leadership, 
to be leaders who are prepared to be humiliated. And this evening, of course, is also an occasion, in addition to celebrating the thank and benefactors our come out of that, for marking the transition to a new era in our leadership at ACA, from Neville Burnsmith to Parallel Park. ACA is in such good shape thanks to the selfless and visionary leadership of Neville over so many years. So much to thank you for. And as we prepare to embrace the challenges of the current time, we're called to pray for Caroline that she will be given all the gifts she needs from God in this world. Now, I know that Caroline is very aware just to muddy the waters a little bit more, but today is also the feast day of a saint very special to her, that is Saint Ethel Breda, the abbess of Eden in the second century. A holy lady who used all of her worldly gifts and talents and background to serve the church and society at large, but chose to be a servant of God above all, in her leadership that makes the monastic community in the Fen country all those ages ago. Caroline has written a thesis on the Catholic I really must read that sometime. And I hope that it's a guide to her in the years to come as she leads this mixed family of such dedicated disciples responding to the call to build up the church at this time. But enough for the moment of a handover from Neville to Caroline. There'll be plenty of opportunity later when both of them speak to us. To come back to the question How do we respond when faith is unwritten? At ACN, we're not just a charitable organisation, but a Catholic Christian community aiming to build a civilization of love, working especially with our brothers and sisters who are deprived of religious freedom and who really are humiliated for faith, and also learning from them what it is to be Christian in the life that you are in. Now, this evening is also an occasion, of course, to thank you for all you do and all your prayers. These sentiments are expressed in what I thought was a very powerful way in the International Benefactors Day Letter just released to coincide with tomorrow's Great Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The letter reminds us who we all are as a pastoral organization of the heart of the church. Benefactors are the hidden heart and the driving engine of ACM's past religion and activity. Without that heart, the inner source of love, we cannot do anything truly good. Only love opens our heart so that we bear fruit and so that our fruit remains. The benefactors of ACM, in their help to the needy and the poor, imitate the love of the heart of Jesus which conquered evil in the world and gives us eternal life. Probably the earliest biblical depiction of the heart of Jesus, the letter goes on, is Christ the good shepherd. He seeks out every single sheep and cares for it. And this is also the basis of the pastoral character of all our projects. Through his most sacred heart, Jesus reveals to us the mystery of God's goodness to all from him, we learn to meet our fellow human beings with his mercy and see Jesus himself. Works of mercy unite us most deeply with the heart of Jesus. Mercy means to have a heart for the suffering, the needy, the weak, and the injured. This is why we want to thank God especially on the Feast of the Sacred Heart 
for the generosity of our benefactors and pray for our project partners for them, their families and their intentions. And we do that this evening as this Mass is for all of our benefactors. What I simply want to add to that letter is thank you so much for giving us hope for continuing to support us even at this difficult time in so many ways. I'm hearing so much these days how many people are frustrated, lonely, fed up with life, and also people who have been lost amid the new reality of these strangers and times. Lost jobs, broken relationships, financial difficulty, bereavement, suffering. But we persevere. While we recognize this, we encounter the Christ John the Baptist points to and whom the persecuted, humiliated church shows. Discerning all those where the Lamb, the Messiah, is in our midst. In resilience, in gratitude, in new possibilities in life, conversion, connection with who we are. As the human class. Pope Francis says that at a time of transition, we're called to rebuild in hope together, recognizing our need for community, our interdependence as the human race. This is a time of new beginnings, of new hope, when we turn our hearts and minds towards those things. As St. John Henry Newman puts it, there is a plan for each one of us to respond to our specific vocation as part of that plan of the world. All called, as was John the Baptist, to be heralds of his kingdom, where the humiliation of the cross becomes our return. So happy inaugural Benefactors Day. Happy feast of the birth of Sir John the Baptist, and tomorrow of the sacred heart. Two wonderful feasts which remind us of our call to be heralds of Christ whose heart reaches out to them. Thank you for all you do once again. May God bless you and reward you now and for the rest. On this solemnity, we now recite the creed together. So let us stand. I believe in one God, the Father of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God is not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the honor of the Virgin Mary, and became him. For our sake, he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and death, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will be found. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Lord, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one and only the Catholic and the Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of Let's be seated, please. And we bring our gifts of bread and wine to the altar. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate the fitting honor and nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern us throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis Arthur and Vincent of Bishop and the Sister Bishops, and all those who hold on to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gather here in faith and devotion on them to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to you. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well being, and to pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we remember, especially the glorious ever virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph as Christ, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Peters, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysopolis, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your sins. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting power. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your own family. Order our days in your peace, and command the people to be delivered from eternal damnation, and counsel command the heart of those who are chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offer in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving him thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. A history of faith. We know that you and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven, Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty and the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless body, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father and faith. And the offering of your high priest and of his name, a holy sacrifice, a spotless gift. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to demand that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel at your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heaven. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sweet peace. 
grant ever the living pray, and all who seek in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, the pious Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcelinus, Peter, Felicity, Petra, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your sins. Admit us in beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your power, through Christ our Lord. Who will you continue to make all these good things, Lord? You sanctify them, fill them with love, bless them, and bestow them upon us. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory of the Lord and His cross, forever the Lord our God. Oh. Mm-hmm.
Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly land, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know that the author of the Earl Reaper, Christ is coming, John Walter, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So now, to invite Carol and Carl to address us.
and he was And welcome to everybody, uh, everyone who's great with the train strikes to get here today. And for all of you who are watching us on the live stream from home or possibly in the coming days by catch up, you're all very welcome and we're so grateful to have you here with us on our Benefactors Day Mass. I'd like to thank all of our benefactors for two things. Well, lots of things, but two big things. The first thing is for choosing to support the suffering and persecuted church through aid to the church in That's a wonderful thing, and we are so grateful and so thankful to you for that. And you do it in a variety of ways. I know you are just telling me all the time <laughs> how we pray, how we say the rosary every day. Pray for the to mass and start to think about those who aren't able to express their faith the way we can. The way that you support our projects financially, volunteering for us, uh, attend our events, all sorts of different ways. And we're on this journey together, and so it just means everything that you feel able and willing to do this for us. So thank you so much. I always say that the millions of people who are healthy don't get the chance to thank you. That's our job to do that for them. So, from us, I go to the church in England, and from all of the people around me, thank you very much. But there's another thing that I want to thank you for, and that's for sharing your stories with us. Do you know, not a day goes by when I don't get to meet someone and talk to someone, or someone who answers the phones, or opens the post, comes and says, Can I need more papers? And you share with us and you tell us why you come to know about church. You, you come to, to you tell us what it is that you've learned from maybe our mailing or one of our reports or attending an event, and you tell us what that means to you. And that inspires us and that humbles us and that motivates us. So I want to thank you for that as well. So, however it is that you support us, and, and then, you know, the stories are legion <laughs> and amazing. You know, five, six, seven-year-olds who undertake sponsored challenges to raise money after an ACM assembly in their school. How about that? How about an amazing <laughs> lady who writes letters and, and sends mass items into the community outreach office in Lancaster and has taken the time to write out of his name and he brings a mass for all of us every time. It's wonderful. So whatever you do, however you support us, please keep sharing, please keep telling us about your faith journey, and please know that that inspires us. It helps all of us to work harder and to do better, not just for the people around the world who are helping, but also for you. So thank you. Thank you most for you and for us this morning. While I'm in the banking mood, um, I be raising a benefactor's day and trying to our staff as well. It's such a wonderful team. I've always thought that. And that since I've taken a new role, and I now realize I'm not to introduce myself, I'm Tara Rosari, I'm Caroline Law, and I am the new national director of Age of the Church of England. And I've worked for ACN for over eight years now. I was a Northwest manager, and that we have been the head of the community so I'm an interim candidate, but I, I know the staff, and the staff knows me, but they are a wonderful bunch of good people. And I know you don't know that, but I want to take a moment and thank you for having me. Rachel, I'm here, and I'm just going to give you the evidence and case that I'm going to give you this. Thank you so much. And that gets me to the living privilege we have. I also have to thank Deborah. Deborah Kurtzman, our Alpha Lady Personal Director, and Rachel. He's been with us for over 30 years, and we are really missing him. <laughs> such things. But he's a wonderful person, and without his help and support, and his gentle hands to guide us, and his leadership, it's, it's going to be a tough hill to climb. But we can do it because he's taught us well. So I just want everybody to please take a moment in your prayers and start. And to say thank you to my mom for wishing you along and happy retirement. I'm going to stop this before I cry because that was exciting. But we are going to miss you now. Thank you so much. So, whether you're a benefactor or a staff member, 
for helping us to direct our, as I said in the video we made, from my heart and our heart to yours. Thank you so much for your support. I'd like to introduce Patricia after our, our head of fundraising volunteer, who's going to um, share the piece of information. This is just a reminder that aid to the church and the spend that day is actually a world event. So I'm reading now the International Prayer and Reflection. O oh Lord, I want to be completely transformed into your mercy and be your living reflection. May the greatest of all divine attributes, that of your unfathomable mercy, pass through my heart and soul to my neighbour. Help me, O Lord, that my eyes may be merciful, so that I may, may never suspect or judge from appearances. But look for what is beautiful in my neighbour's souls and come to bear us from them. Help me, O Lord, that my ears may be merciful, so that I may not be heed of my and I, that I may be heed to my neighbour's needs and not be indifferent to their pains and loneliness. Help me, O Lord, that my tongue may be merciful, so that I should never speak negatively of my neighbour. Which have a word of comfort and forgiveness for all. Help me, O Lord, that my hands may be merciful and filled with good deeds, so that I may do every good to my neighbours and take upon myself the most difficult and troublesome tasks. Help me, O Lord, that my feet may be merciful, so that I may hurry to assist my neighbour, overcoming my own fatigue and weariness. My true rest is in the service of my neighbour. Help me, O Lord, that my heart may be merciful so that I myself may feel all the sufferings of my neighbour. I will refuse my heart to no one, nor be sincere even with those who I know who abuse my kindness. And I will lock myself up in the most merciful heart of Jesus, and will bear my own suffering in silence. May your mercy, O Lord, rest upon me. Amen. <laughs> We're very honoured that from the 5th to the 10th of July, we're going to be welcoming to our home of our most key project partners, long term project partners, Archbishop Ashley Ward of Lebanon and the Rack, and Sister Annie de Legend of the Lebanon Syria. They're going to be the events in London and around the country, so please go to our events, look for events section on the website for more details. And just to finish, this is a thank you or a reflection from Archbishop Ward of Lebanon. He says, You would take the end to help save us from extinction here in Rally. Now our aim is not just to fix but to try. And thank you to everybody here and watching the live stream and anywhere who is in support of the end for all that you do to make this come true. Thank you. And uh, I just want to add my own personal thank you to Caroline for allowing me thank all the benefactors today to Church of I'm never, uh, never coped space. It's been a great privilege to run these in the UK for more than 35 years. And I was thinking with your words, Father Donald, and uh, we was going to feast the Sacred Heart tomorrow, how to reflect. And I was thinking one place for you who said you're one of the few charities that realise that people call out for food for their souls as well as for their bodies. And your sister from Sudan, who when they were being bombed and children were running towards her at one time, she opened her heart in prayer and remembered that she was being prayed for by you, the benefactors of aid to the church in need. And she echoed almost the words of Newman before I called on before. She said, Then I realized we are linked heart to heart through change. 
Thank you. 